Hi there. Thank you for joining us for Hobbies, Crafts, and Collectibles this week. I'm your host, Duska Cornwell. I relish the opportunity to talk to our first guest today. Dale Anderson of Paris is here, and he collects Wienermobiles. You're going to enjoy his collection. Also, Cheryl Tucker from Lerna creates beautiful home decor from everyday items. You'll see what I mean in a bit. You stay here, and I'll catch up with you in a bit. It's my privilege to welcome Dale Anderson from Paris to our set today. Hi, Dale. You know, hi. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> I certainly hope I cut the mustard by being here today. <laughs> You're a very punny guy, Let's I can tell start. right Let's, off the bat. You deal with Wienermobiles, you have to be. <laughs> well, when I met you and found out that you collected Wienermobiles, I had to have you on the show because, um, well, first of all, just there's something about Oscar Mayer from my childhood, you know, mm -hmm. from the songs to the little wiener whistles and everything. I just, I, I'm intrigued by it. So I'm glad to have you. And most, right most people are uh, drawn in when they see a 27 foot wiener mobile driving down the interstate. <laughs> that, that's true. Something you don't see every day. That's true. <laughs> so tell me what got you first interested in these uh, lovely collectibles. <laughs> um, well, I, I really hadn't collected anything for a long time. Um, and my daughter was going to school at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Madison is the home of, was where the Wienermobiles are, are from. And Oscar Meyer itself was based in Madison, Wisconsin. And so we were driving around and I would see them on the street. And it made me think of, wow, I got a Wienermobile story. Mm -hmm. And that story is, is that when I was uh, a small lad, about five, six years old, um, I had an uncle who lived in Pontiac, Illinois. Okay. And um, his company was bought out by Oscar Meyer Company and became good friends with a gentleman that portrayed little Oscar. And that was George Mulkin from Maryville, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And uh, so on more than one occasion, uh, we lived on a farm and on one, more than one occasion, the Wienermobile would pull into my driveway <laughs> with my uncle and little Oscar uh, for supper. And so we would break bread and they'd be on their merry way. And of course, this happens to everybody, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, no. <laughs> so you say, the Wienermobile is at my house and, and the kids would go, sure, Dale, sure, sure it was. And you really, you know, you don't think anything about it. And then as years go by, then if, you know, go to Madison, it was like, wow, I somewhere I still have the original wiener whistle that George or little Oscar gave me. Mm -hmm. And so from there, it went into uh, digging around. I found it. And then it's like, gee, I wonder what other things that they make for wiener mobiles. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, not that much. It, uh, you really have to look. You a lot of garage sales, a <laughs> lot of, you can go online and find some things, but a lot of it is the same thing over and over again. I see. And I, I tell people it's, it's like collecting 1943 pennies. You know, you have one in San Francisco, Denver, and Philadelphia, and after you've collected all three, there's nothing else <laughs> to collect. And so there's not a lot of it, and hopefully there's still more, and there are some people that are making some today um, and doing it uh, uh, with Photoshop and things like that. So we're, mm -hmm. you know, it's... It's coming along, but there are these wonderful toys, and that's what they are, is toys, and they're to be played with, and mm -hmm. and uh, not setting and uh, collecting dust, so. Uh, well, collected memories, that's what I love yes. about it, is your collection is very personally attached, and uh, that just makes it special, so. Yes, but. yes. So, show me the earliest one that you own here, as far as the Wiener, when, what year did it come out? The Wienermobile, actually, uh, was brainchild of Oscar Mayer's uh, nephew, Carl Meyer. Okay. And so it was 1936, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 1936, they came out with a, a basically a wiener without the bun. And okay. <laughs> so, and it, and it had uh, it was driven around Chicago for the most part. And, uh, and then a couple years later, they came out with a second version. And the second one had the pop hatch on the back where little Oscar could be perched up high and wave to the kids and throw out wiener whistles. And this was actually before wiener whistles. And so that's, 
and then <laughs> I, that's it was sort of the end of the story because World War II happened, and then mm. they didn't do anything, and then they geared it back up again in the late 40s, early 50s. I see. With the 52 model, and this so is this, this is, is this is that's what this is. It's right. 1952. Uh, this one has uh, it has been played with a lot. It is uh, you run it down the road, and, and little Oscar goes in and out and in oh. and out. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> and, they, and they have several versions of this. One is that the wheels, I mean, it's like all collectibles. They, they change them a little bit. There's sure. the one that's actually a year newer than this that has the yellow wheels oh, okay. instead of the white walls and, and the, the dark wheels. And so that's probably the earliest thing that's that we've great. got. And you've got a postcard here, too, that has, and this is the same year, right? Yes. The 52? Yeah, the 52 is probably the one that uh, baby boomers remember the most. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, it is um, at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. Oh. There, I mean, it's such a, a, a such a prominent place in the museum that the uh, cafeteria is actually the Wienermobile Cafe, and the tables and chairs are designed to be <laughs> pieces of lettuce and oh, buns. Fun. And it's um, and they serve hot dogs. I'm assuming. And they, oh, they serve hot dogs, <laughs> and I I can imagine what kind they serve. I believe they're those delicious Oscar Mayer wieners. So <laughs> that's great. Now here's the the coveted wiener whistle. <laughs> this this one was actually yes, that one was given to me by George uh, or little Oscar way back when, um, and I was playing with them this morning. So I have a couple other ones here. Uh, and that's really the only one that actually works well. Actually works well. And uh, the one okay. you have there, that's yeah. a glow in the dark one. In case you get the oh. urge to do this in the dark, uh, <laughs> it, it glows in the dark and you can uh, do the Oscar Mayer Wiener whistle song on that. And, and uh, even in chrome. <laughs> and in uh, uh, 1993, Hot Wheels came out with that one. Oh, okay. Which is the regular one. And a couple of years later, of course, you're going to have to check it out and do some chrome. I got you. And so uh, it's, a couple, <laughs> it's just a couple of years older. But it's, tricked out version. it's a tricked out <laughs> version of the, of the chrome Wienermobile. I see. So they are, you know, people are really into nostalgia right now. And mm -hmm. so the company's probably um, bringing that back a little bit. Everybody can remember Oscar Mayer Wieners from their childhood. They can remember the song. Now, this one plays, right? That's oh, that's the, not the play one. This is the play one. Is that the play one? Yeah. Yes, that this one. This is well, more recent. It's an, actually, it's an ornament. It's a Hallmark Christmas ornament from the year 2000. Gotcha. And if you actually it, turn it on. <laughs> Who doesn't know that tune, you know? The first four notes, you know what it is. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Oh, that's great. I, <laughs> I uh, try not to... Uh, uh, you know, play that too much at Christmas time because people won't come back to the house if I play that very often or very long. <laughs> and then with the other craze, the Beanie Babies, yeah. uh, they came out with. Uh, I did uh, not know. They and had a and uh, for uh, commercial purposes, uh, one that I um, have seen only a couple times. I know it exists, and it's a 36-inch long Beanie Baby wow. type, you know, collectible like that. And um, needless to say, some of those go for a um, pretty penny. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so we're getting to that. Well, if I ever come across one, you'll be the first person I'll talk to. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> what about this one? This one kind of looks like it's uh, got a little modern edge to it. <laughs> it's a little bit more modern. It uh, is uh, actually a piggy bank, actually a wiener yeah. bank, I should say. And um, what you can do with this if it's, mm -hmm. is that uh, you just do that and you can get your money out. Because, oh. you know, a lot of banks, it's hard to get your money right. out once you get it in. But not that one. Not and that one. That was pretty simple. There's nothing in it, though. No, I've used it all. To, <laughs> to buy. To buy more wiener, wiener mobile <laughs> stuff, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> and, awesome. And that one came out uh, uh, in the late 60s, early 70s. I see. So we've got some pictures, actually, we're going to be showing on the screen. And... Mm -hmm. um, you have gotten your picture taken with the Wienermobile on yes. more than one occasion. Yes, I was, um, <laughs> the pictures that I've got, uh, that I brought today, uh, I was supposed to be in Madison and, and I was there and I was supposed to be with the Wienermobile and the Wienermobile didn't get the message and it left without me. Oh. I was heartbroken, I was crushed and I came back to Paris and picked up the local paper and found out it was gonna be in Kansas 
at the, their festival in Kansas, Illinois the following weekend. Oh. So I drove all that way and, and oh. just ended up going to Kansas <laughs> and got lots of pictures uh, with, the win with the Wienermobile um, great. with the license plate of Yummy. And that's the other oh. thing is that the, the Wienermobiles all have different license plate. Some of them, uh, one is Yummy, one is Big Bun, uh, <laughs> one is I Wish I Were. Oh, cool. Yeah, they have, they have some. Um, and the fleet itself has now changed a little bit. They have two new additions. One is the, the little, what they call the little wiener, and that is the one built on a, a Mini Cooper body. Mm -hmm. And it uh, is that what we're seeing in this picture? Yes, that's okay. the one that's in that picture right okay. there. Uh, that picture was uh, was taken by my son. Okay. In Indianapolis, he walked out of his apartment one day, and it was parked in front of his <laughs> house. <laughs> and he. Okay, now this is just too strange. Yes, he called me on the phone and said, Dad, is there something we need to talk about? And I said, what are you talking about? And so anyway, so he just went outside his front door and, and snapped a couple of pictures. Oh, that, that's um, a cool looking one. I it like is, that. and that's a Mini Cooper. And then they okay. have the newest one out because the big rage is food trucks. Mm, yes. And so they have uh, come up with a uh, Oscar Mayer food truck that uh, looks like a food truck except you can't miss this big Oscar Mayer wiener sitting on and top of it. And do they serve? The oh yeah, they go to oh, the festivals okay. and, they, and they go around and and uh, it's a great summer job for a lot of college kids. I see, sure. Because they drive the wiener mobile. Uh, those folks are called hot doggers and uh, there is, a needs to say, a lot of people uh, apply every year for those positions okay. and they only have a fleet uh, right now of um, five of the big ones okay. and um, so it's you know, you don't, there's not that many openings, but they rotate them every year. Tell us the truth, though. Is that like a dream job of yours? Well, for me, it would be. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> okay, now you've got to tell me t the story real quick about um, little Oscar. He grew, when he grew up, now he passed away, what year? In 2008. Okay, 2008. And he kind of had a, a really interesting send-off, didn't he? He did. When he passed away, um, he wanted and got the Wienermobile to uh, be at his graveside when he was actually buried. And um, 50 people stood there and sang, I wish I was an Oscar Mayer Wiener Oh. At, at his graveside. Did they have their little... They had their wiener whistles. They had yes, their they wiener did. whistles. <laughs> yes, they did. Oh, my goodness. It, um, so it's, it's, I mean, there's so many things about uh, uh, the Wienermobile and little Oscar. Uh, there's a Wizard of Oz connection. Oh, really? It um, one of uh, there's four little Oscars that we, everybody grew to know and love, okay. and one of them um, was actually well, actually two of them were in the Wizard of Oz. Uh, Jerry Maron uh, was one of them, and he was actually when you do the Lollipop Kid uh -huh. song, yeah, he's the one in the middle. Oh, and he interesting. Became, he became the little Oscar that people knew on the West Coast. Okay, now we all want to go back and watch the movie. Yes. <laughs> Now, when you see the uh, the part of the movie where uh, the house falls on the wicked witch, mm -hmm. um, the coroner. Okay, sure. Uh, Mr. Rabe, <laughs> Meinhardt Rabe is his name. Okay. And had a small speaking part, and uh, he became the little Oscar on the East Coast. And actually, Mr. Rabe is the one who got George, who was an accountant for Pepsi at the time, to apply to be little Oscar. Fascinating. I love that connection. Thanks for sharing. And thanks for bringing your collection. This has been so much fun, Dale. You know, I must say that uh, you're the uh, first one who's actually wanted to see my Wienermobile collection, so. Well, there you go. <laughs> that's, you know, that's us. Fun <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. And I pretty much started using my imagination and building stuff myself. That is cool. Now you you did make birdhouses at one time and kind of got you into the woodworking bug. Yes, I did little birdhouses and I had like decorations in the back of them and stuff mm -hmm. and decorated them up. But I wanted to go to the bigger things. Right, <laughs> and so you found some of your inspiration off the internet, and that, that can be such a, a great tool, can't it? To yes. see what are other people out there doing, and it kind of inspires you and gets your, your creative juices flowing. Um, but you actually take um, materials from old objects or found objects or whatever. You don't see a, a shutter, you see, you know, something else when you look at it, yes. right? Yeah. Okay, so. Over here, first we're gonna start with the smaller and work up, okay. okay? This is a lovely bench. I love, love, love this bench. So what have you done to get the legs on this? Well, what I did was I we put the little leg holders here, uh -huh. on the and screwed them on. And what we did was took, this was part of a waterbed side, and I cut them down. Oh, okay. And just added the legs to it. I see. So the just, legs were bought this way. Yes. Okay. And then this was reclaimed wood. But then look what you did on the top. Is this um, decoupage or? It's, oh, they are stickers. Really? That is cool. So you have applied some stickers and it has a protective finish I can see. So this could actually even go on the front porch. But now somebody's already spoken for this one, right? My, my daughter. <laughs> my daughter's Darn. One. My daughter did. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Does she get involved too, your daughter? She does some things. Okay. She's, she's done an entertainment center, which I was very proud of, so. Very nice, very nice. Well, another lovely red item we have back here. Now this is, a, a, I wanna say potting bench, but you know, that's not quite traditionally, I guess, what to call it, but it actually holds pots, holds yes. um, flowers or herbs or whatever you mm -hmm. would want to hold, right? right? So what did you use to get uh, the materials for this? Actually, this was given to me and there was some broken pieces on it. Ah. So I redone it. Okay. Put it back together and I, this was one solid piece. I put the holes in, put the pots in. And, and she makes it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> I just put holes in it and put pots in it. But yeah, and you've painted the pots out to match the match. bench, which right. I love. Very cool. And then um, we're gonna tilt it just to show so they can see it a little bit. You can see the pots sitting in there. Very nice. Again, perfect for uh, this time of year, you know, to be out in the back of the house, you know, by the garden or um, sitting on your porch. It's very nice. Okay. Now we've got next to us here um, a great item. Now I was talking about shutters earlier. These are actually bifold doors, aren't they? Yes. And so you looked at a pair of bifold doors and how on earth did you come up with a corner shelf? Well, I thought about it and looked at some of the pictures on the internet. Uh huh. And I thought, well, I'll, you know, I'm going to come up and try to make one for myself. Yeah. And I cut out the facing of it and, and I just came up with this. That's awesome. Now, when you, when you say you cut it out, do you use power tools? I do have a table saw, scroll mm -hmm. saw, hand sanders. That's what I pretty much use. I like a sister who can use power, power tools. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all over it. <laughs> And so then you put an applique there at the top mm -hmm. and did the piece at the top, did you cut that out um, yes. yourself at your own design yes. there? That's really cute. And then, you know, put in the shelves. What a great idea. Did all the painting and the polyurethane. <laughs> yeah, and that can be a process too, yes. can't it? So what, what's your favorite, um, not brand, but type of paint? Do you use a flat paint or do you like to use glossy? I love or? the gloss. It okay. makes it shine. I love the shine. Okay, so see every artist has their particular look that they go for and love. So, and then do you polyurethane over the top yes. of the paint? Then? Yes, I do. Wow, so that's some, again, some steps, but it's worth it because it's going to last a long, long yeah, time. Nice. And especially if you were going to use it on a sun porch or something like that, mm -hmm. get a little bit of weather on it. Very cool. Now, out front's my favorite piece. I love this piece. Um, this is actually, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but three chairs that you have put together and made a cool bench out of. Yes. Very cool. Now, um, where, what's the story of the chairs? Where'd you pick them up at? I picked up three kitchen chairs at a yard sale. Okay. And the seats were pretty bad on, so I took them off. Mm hmm And I decided to add some boards and made a bench out of it and bought some cushions. And Very nice. So there, we've got the three chairs, and then you've actually cut one big long piece of wood to go over the top of all three mm -hmm. of them. So that makes the bench seat. And then again, you can, it's by taste, but you, have, you must love red. 
I like red. <laughs> I do. Yeah, so, but that's great because a person can use, it might even be cute to put three totally different cushions on it. Oh, or, yeah. You know, mix it up a little Make bit. Make it red, white, and blue for 4th of July or... Right. Right. Mm. Now, have you um, used a lot of your items that you've made in your own home? I have. Okay. Yeah. What's some of your favorite things that you use? Um, that, that I built mm -hmm. was... I've had a lot of the planter boxes I, that I've made. Okay. I like sitting out in my little flower beds and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I have made a little bookcase for my grandson that he can put little books and stuff in. Yeah, just so, his size. Huh? Yeah, I mean, I make little coffee tables. I've made a shadow box. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, and now people are starting to notice. Like somebody actually stopped at your house, you told me, mm -hmm. and said, can I buy what's on your front porch? <laughs> yes. I made I made this out of bunk beds. I made a little bench uh -huh. and a little coffee table to go with it. And somebody stopped by and they said, "Who built that?" And I said, "I did." And yeah, he said, oh, I'll take that. That's <laughs> great. That's great. Now, have you seen any projects that have inspired you? Something in the works that you're either working on right now or want to work on soon? Well, I have another bench in the works, but the one main thing that I'm really going to work on is a roll around kitchen island. Oh, that sounds great. Out of a dresser. Oh, oh, out of a dresser. Out of a dresser. Fascinating. Are you going to use that yourself in your own kitchen then? Or? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's your prerogative, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, my dad does a lot of repurposed things. And so once he has started doing that, then you've got people coming out of the woodwork and saying, hey, I'm not going to use this. Is this something you can use? Do you have people like saying, hey, here's a chair? Or <laughs> my garage is so full right now. <laughs> I have people giving me things. Uh -huh. I go pick up at yard sales, mm -hmm. resale shops. I mean, it, I could use it. It's like a treasure hunt, isn't it? Yes, it, it is. So you walk into a thrift store and you're not necessarily looking in the home decor department. You're, you're going to find stuff that may not be what its intention was originally, right? Right. 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 Oh, I love that. I love it, too. I mean, it, it you're, makes your mind wonder. Makes, yeah. you, makes you think. Yeah. So. What's your favorite material to use? I mean, I know wood, but I mean, like, what kinds of things just make your heart go, oh. <laughs> oh uh, I mean, I like doing the, the, uh, appli uh, the decoration piece on yeah, the Yeah, a little applique, and, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. and, I mean, I just like working with stuff like that. Uh, the rustic stars. Mm-hmm. So, Americana kind of Americana. Uh-huh. That's pretty much my... Very good, very good. So, um, what's your husband think of your hobby? He helps me out quite a bit. He does a lot of the cutting for me, you know, if I'm too busy painting or something, but yeah, he does help me out. That's good. Does he want his garage back? That's my question. Yes. He does want his garage back. <laughs> so does my husband. <laughs> You'll but get it when you get it. We're kindred spirits, Cheryl, <laughs> That's right. you and I. You That's know, right. We, sometimes we see something and we don't know immediately what we're going to use it for, but you know that it's got, it's gold. You've got to keep it and hold on to it because that perfect project's going to come, isn't yep. it? <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Yeah. Do you ever use like old windows or things like that too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a window right now that I'm working on that's going to be going to Kentucky as a wedding gift. Oh, see, yeah, that's great too. Um, what a personal touch to put on things. Mm -hmm. um, speaking to people who are out there, you know, wondering, Oh, you know, I need a hobby. What should I do? How, how would you encourage them as far as doing this? What kind of equipment would they need? Is it, is it much of a, an investment? Um, it would be an investment if they want to really get into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, if you got a great imagination mm -hmm. and you love to work with your hands, and that, this would be great for, to do it. Yeah. I mean, it just blows your way. It, take, it, it relaxes me when I go out and it's do It's not things. work, is it? No. When, you, when you're passionate about it, it's... Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it just relaxes me. That's great. So, this is something that would really help out a lot of people that likes to work with their hands. Sure. And for younger people, too, oh, um, yeah. like you said, you started with birdhouses. That's a great place mm -hmm. to start. You could um, make boxes out of reclaimed wood or, yes. you know, and put little embellishments on it, knobs mm -hmm. and trinkets and things like that, and just really let a kid. Imagine yeah, you're thinking outside of the box that way. You're mm -hmm. not putting a kit together. You know, you're really teaching kids imagination and creativity. Right. And so that's great. And I love that you're making for family members because that brings it all kind of full circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, a lot of the windows that I get out of my my mom and dad's old house. Oh, cool. So it's a sentimental thing. Absolutely. So. Are those things hard for you to let go, or are you? 
It's, well, as long as it's in the family, it's mm -hmm. not really that hard, but then, yeah. but it is. So for the wedding, yeah, you were talking about that. So if that's a family wedding, what a great gift to give somebody. It's something that an ancestor mm -hmm. had in their home and you can make something new out of it that they can use in their home. What a beautiful mm -hmm. idea. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I'm putting the wedding picture behind the window to make it look like you're looking through the window to see them. Oh, that is cool. I love that idea. Cheryl, you're full of ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm just really thrilled that you brought that. I know it wasn't easy bringing in some of these pieces, mm -hmm. but we really appreciate you bringing them in and your creativity and imagination and for inspiring some of our viewers to give it a shot. No problem. I'm All right. Glad you had me. Well, thank you, Cheryl. Appreciate it very much. <laughs>